Hi everyone and welcome to the Soccernet Challenge 2025. Over the years, the Soccernet Challenges have become a key platform for pushing what's possible with computer vision in sports. This year, we're excited to bring you new opportunities to create and innovate. That's right, Silvio. It's been amazing to watch this community grow, with researchers and enthusiasts from all over the world working together to advance sports analytics. Whether you've been with us before or this is your first time, there's something for everyone to get involved with. And one of the best parts of SoccerNet is the sense of community. Every year, we see incredible collaborations and creativity from participants. If you haven't joined us yet, now's the perfect time to get started. Exactly. Join our Discord channel to connect with other researchers, share ideas, and get support throughout the challenge. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for tutorials, updates, and behind-the-scenes content. This year's challenges are designed to solve real problems in soccer from helping referees make better decisions to recreating the stadium experience for fans at home. To show how these challenges connect to real-world soccer, let's join Karen, who's visiting stadiums, to give us a closer look. Over to you, Karen. I think that it was a fault. How could artificial intelligence assist referees in making accurate decisions? What do you think, Jan? I think it was a foul, but I didn't really see it. Did he even touch him? I don't know. I will just give a yellow card. If only I had access to a video assist referee, then I could immediately check if it was a foul or not. The problem is, VAR technology is very expensive. That's why we organized the second edition of the MV Foul Recognition Challenge, such that you can build an AI that can automatically detect fouls, their severity and the type of foul. As an input, your model gets multiple views of the same foul from different viewpoints, and you have to predict two tasks. The first one is if it was a foul or not and the severity, and the second task is the type of foul. The full description is available, available on our GitHub. Furthermore, we have implemented the first baseline, which we presented in our VAS paper, also available in the description below. Make sure to have a look to have a first idea on how to solve the task. If you have ever wanted to know what it is to be a referee, then join us for the second edition of the MV Foul Recognition Challenge. All right, fantastic, Jan. And now for the next task, game state reconstruction. During games, it's important to gather statistics about the players that can be used for a lot of things. Let's see! Hi everyone, I'm Mark and I'm super excited to join the SoccerNet team this year as a co-organizer of the second edition of the Game Stage Reconstruction Challenge. This challenge is all about predicting where each individual is located on the field from the video sequences. And why is this important? Well, computing the state of the game helps us understand match dynamics, extract detailed player statistics and provide crucial insights for coaches or analysts. So in short, it's a key building block for advanced soccer analytics. To fully reconstruct the state of the soccer match, we actually need to solve four different computer vision tasks. First, we need to know exactly where the field is in the image and how the camera is positioned. That's pitch localization and camera calibration. Second, we need to detect, track, and re-identify all players and referee throughout the match. Third, we have to recognize each player's jersey number, which is essential for identifying who is who. And finally, we determine team affiliation. So, for every video, participants will need to output the full game state, which includes the 2D position of every individual on the field, their role, whether they are player, referee or goalkeeper, the jersey number and their team affiliation, whether they belong to the left or right team relative always to the camera's view. Just like last year, you don't have to track the ball, just the players. To evaluate the submissions, we'll be using the GS Hora, which is the same metric as last year. If you're not familiar with it, don't worry. You can find all the details on our GitHub repo. We know this challenge requires solving multiple complex tasks. So to help you get started, we're releasing a baseline using TrackLab, which is a modular framework designed specifically for video level tracking. 
This baseline is actually integrating my own method from last year, which plays second in the challenge. It features a strong camera calibration method and a modular structure. So whether you want to tackle the entire challenge or just focus on specific subtasks, this baseline is a great starting point. Now, be aware that you can only use publicly available data to train your models. You can find all the information on our GitHub in the Challenge Rules section. We can't wait to see what you come up with, so good luck and let's make this year's challenge even better than the last. Amazing! And now, let's welcome Arthur in the team for Ball Action Spotting. Hey, are you here to watch the game? Hey, yes, but I'm also here to notate all the actions happening during the game. Hopefully, for the last time. You see, the Second Night community is working on automating all this process with AI. In fact, we have prepared the 2025 Second Night Ball Action Spotting Challenge, and we'd love your participation. Here's how it works. Like in previous editions of the challenge, participants are tasked with creating a model capable of analyzing football game videos to identify and localize all the actions happening during the game. Like last year, the actions include 12 categories. So, what's new for this year? We have added an extra difficulty. You don't only need to identify and localize all of the actions, but also to identify the team that is performing them, the one on the left or the right side of the field. For this challenge, we are providing the same video dataset as in previous editions, with 7 games for training, validation and testing, plus 2 additional games for making your predictions for the challenge. And don't forget, you can also make use of the original SoccerNet dataset, which includes 500 games. Plus, this year is that we have updated the annotations to account for this team information. So don't forget to download the updated annotations. Of course, we are also adapting the mean average precision metric to take into account this team information. Specifically, for each combination of team and action, we compute the average precision. Then, for each of the actions, we will add the scores for each of the teams, weighting according to the number of ground truth observations for each team side. Finally, we average the scores across all action classes to obtain our final team map metric, which we may use to evaluate your submissions. And yes, the one second tolerance still applies. To get you started, we are providing a baseline based on last year's winning method, TDIT, which we adapt to take into account this team information. To do that, we add an additional prediction head to identify the team that is performing each action. So make sure to check out our GitHub to get started. So with that, everything is ready for the 2025 SoccerNet Ball Action Spotting Challenge. Now it's your turn. Push the boundaries of AI, outperform the baseline and show us what you've got. Good luck. We can wait to see all of your solutions. Fantastic. Now let's hear Arnaud, our new recruit on SoccerNet. Hi guys, very excited to be uh, here presenting the fourth challenge of uh, SoccerNet this year. It's called, uh, it's about molecular depth estimation and the task here will be to assign for each frame of the data set uh, depth value in relative scale. And for example, to give a bit of insight about molecular depth estimation, at the moment I'm at one meter from the camera and now I'm about five meters from the camera. And now, where do you think I am from the camera? Now you might be wondering why a molecular depth estimation. Well, obviously you will be able to reconstruct a 3D video of a football game, even though you have only a 2D point of view. Moreover, you will be able to have a potential application in augmented reality, and that has been seen already in the so-called on your tabletop article that has been published a few years ago. The dataset consists of a certain number of images that have been provided from a video game and that we've extracted automatically. So a bit more now about the metrics you will be evaluated on. We chose to evaluate you on the RMSE, but in the article we actually looked at five metrics, RMSE, RMSE log, absolute relative, um, C log and a special one that you will find in the article. So um, obviously the baseline will be made available, it is already and you will have to at least beat that baseline please. But obviously all those information are already available on our GitHub. Back to you Anthony and Silvio. Oh that was amazing! The SoccerNet Challenge 2025 is already underway and submissions are open until April 24. This is your chance to push the boundaries of computer vision in sports and contribute to the growing SoccerNet community. You'll have access to all public data, including pre-processed datasets, 
evaluation scripts, and detailed documentation to help you get started. We recommend focusing on innovating in the method part. While participants are allowed to use publicly available datasets, these datasets must be made accessible to everyone in advance. That said, we encourage participants to use the Soconet data as a foundation for their work. If you perform well, you can win the competition. But that's not all. You'll also have the chance to present your solution to the community. The winners will be announced at the CV Sports Workshop during CVPR 2025. So make sure to submit your results before April 24 and join us in shaping the future of computer vision in soccer. It's always exciting to see the community come together for these challenges. This year, we're looking forward to even more innovative solutions and collaboration. Whether you're working on AI for refereeing, game state reconstruction, ball action spotting, or monocular depth estimation, there is no limit to what we can achieve when we combine our expertise and our passion. Before we wrap up, a big thank you to everyone who has made this possible. The organizing team, our community, and all of you who are about to take on this year's challenges. We can't wait to see what you'll create. So let's get started and make this the best Soccernet challenge yet. Good luck and see you next time. Bye.